All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We have a killer episode lined up today. I'm so excited. We've been having way too much fun before we went live here. Uh, check out the title of this episode, How to Live a Badass Life. And my guest here, Angela, who I'm going to bring on in just a second, uh, coined the phrase badassery backstage. <laughs> she just trademarked it on the spot. So I don't know if Harmonious at Lunch gets a piece of that, but... Uh, that is just awesome. So we're going to talk about badassery. We're going to talk about how to be a badass. Um, but real quick, what's going on at What If, what we have going on these days. So uh, today, if you're watching this live, was day one of our Next Level Business Boot Camp. Um, it's not too late to go register, and we have another one coming up soon. So head on over to whatif.com slash navigate. Get your business to the next level in 2024 by applying the uh, harmonious architecture to your business. So enough about us. Let's learn how to be a badass and do badassery. So Angela, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, badassery TM. I totally badassery don't know if that's TM. taken, but I'm taking it. So <laughs> I didn't search oh, the, the database or anything. So we got to we got to find out. All right, so we're going to keep this episode real quick so she can yeah, get over good. and look up if that episode is, or if that's trademarked okay. yet. Yeah, we got things <laughs> Priority, to do. We got right? things. <laughs> we got things to okay. do. Oh, no. So welcome to the show. This is going to be already too much fun. If you're listening and you don't like having fun, stop listening. Just <laughs> That's my warning for you right now. <laughs> so Angela, let's dive in though, because I want to figure out, I, I definitely want to know how to be a badass. Uh, yeah. We're going to get there. But where did this all begin for you? Yeah. Well, like I, we were talking off camera, I feel like there were gems in there too. Um, so what's up, everybody? My name is Angela, and I am an empowerment coach that helps millennials bust out of the should, the limiting status quo, the like narrative that makes us feel obligated and doing shit that doesn't work for us so that they can really claim a life that they love and live an honest, true, and joyful life. Um, and that was not my case in my life. I was living a life that I hated. I would go, I was going to work. I was driving into work, hating it, having panic attacks, crying in the parking lot, trying to like give myself a pep talk, going to my job. And I was like, I freaking hate this. I don't want to do this. And I did that for years because it was like what I was told I should do. I was making six figures. Do you know what I mean? Like I, on paper, it was like a plus, you know, but in my heart and soul, I was like slowly eroding my spirit and my sparkle. And I wasn't listening to like all the health concerns and the symptoms that were coming up. And I was just like, no, it's fine. I can make this work. I can make this work. And I just like was a good girl, right? All those things I was taught to be like a good kid. You know, it's don't be crazy. Don't be too much. Don't be too loud. And I just kept on keeping on miserably for years and years until my dad died suddenly. And that was the catalyst, like, boom, my whole, my whole life changed. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to spend one second being unhappy and being miserable. And that was the catalyst for me to be like, I don't want this and to really stand in it because I knew that if life was precious, I knew that I wasn't going to get my dad back and his legacy and his joy needed to live through me. And I just, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be happy. And I started a business. I started a fitness business that was all around using movement and meditation and mindfulness to be badass and to get connected to yourself. And that got big. That got really big and it became too small to hold all of what was happening. So now I've expanded into the coaching, into podcasting and speaking because I got a lot of shit to say on this topic. <laughs> And you're a badass, so yeah. right? And I'm a badass. And I think that's really what badass, like badassery is and being a badass is. It's not, it's not forceful. I know you got like, I'm from Boston. You're from Jersey. We got two like tough New Englander, like East Coast people up here. But being a badass isn't being forceful. It's not being aggressive. It's being powerful. And it's your power comes from being in control of what you want, what you don't want, what your boundaries are, and your actions. And how do I stay in alignment to what I'm say I'm going to do and actually show up and do it? Because otherwise I'm full of shit and now I'm out of alignment and now I'm like not living a true and honest life. So when you are a badass and you are powerful, you're doing what you say you're going to do and you're doing what you like love and honor and need in your life, regardless of like how crazy anybody thinks it is, right? Because especially if we're talking to entrepreneurs, you might be the only unicorn in a stable full of horses and everyone thinks you're weird, but you're not weird. You're just in a stable full of horses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you got to go find the other unicorns that can fly and sparkle and shit. So yeah, I think your badassery comes from like that knowing and that relentlessness and tenacity of like, no, this is what I need to do 
this is how I'm going to do it. And I don't care what anybody else thinks. And that's what feels right and honest to me. And you have to prove it and you don't have to prove it. You just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I love this. So finding, finding our sparkle, your words, not mine. Um, <laughs> there's, there's you so many trade, phrases you can take that too. You could take that too, if you want. Uh, you help people find their sparkle. We help businesses find their sparkle, the sparkle all around. That's all sparkle and shine like little unicorns. <laughs> so I think, unfortunately, there was a tragedy that was the catalyst to change. But un unfortunately, most times for people, it is whether that's in their business, in their lives, in their leadership, it, it takes this like awakening moment to really slap you in the face for sure. and be like, yo, you got to wake up or you're going to stay asleep. Yeah, so for, sure. for you, like what can you kind of elaborate on what some of those, the, the real tangible symptoms were that you were ignoring? Because I think a lot of people may be there, but they don't even recognize what they were or are for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ooh, get some notes, take out a pen and paper y'all. Cause I hope that this can help in your own like survival guide. You know, I think, listen to it. If you're getting up every morning and I would, I would say it to myself. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I, I, if I had a dollar for every time I said, I don't want to do this. I, I mean, you notice I wouldn't even need to work. I wouldn't even need to work. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's number one. Like how, what are you saying? How are you talking to yourself? You know, I think knowing what you don't want and where you start to feel like icky, it's like you walk into, you walk into a place and you, your shoulders immediately shrug up. You start to like breathe a little bit differently. I think your body will always tell you when situations are not right. So if you slow down a little bit and actually listen to how you're speaking to yourself, to what you say when you walk into a room, to like how your body's responding, I think that can be like a barometer for how things were actually transpiring in your life. And the when I wasn't listening to that, uh, panic attacks, big time, big time. I wasn't sleeping. I would like sweat in the middle of the night. I was getting up, having panic attacks at night. I was having panic attacks in the on the way to work and in, in, in like emotional breakdowns. I used to think I was like bipolar and crazy. And I was like going on all these like the big like mental health journey. And really what it was is I was just constantly put in situations that compromised me. And I didn't feel good about that. And I didn't have the vocabulary at the time to say that's what it was. But I was just so upset and so angry. That's another one. My anger was off the chain, off the chain. You, if, if something went wrong, like I didn't know how to like have a conversation about it. I was just like, what the hell? And, and like a, like a live wire. So it was anger. It was anxiety. Um, wasn't I wasn't listening like my 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 face like I, I looked tired and old and 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 I don't know, just like a curmudgeon, <laughs> just like a curmudgeon person. Um, so those are some of the symptoms. I think the anger was the outward um, reaction. And 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 that's what got me in trouble a lot, you know, because it was always the anger. But the anger was a symptom that something wasn't right. The anxiety was the symptom that something wasn't right. The sweating, the not sleeping through the night symptom, something wasn't right, right? But my body was trying to tell me that through, you know, those little tiny nuanced things that I wasn't paying attention to. Yeah. And that's so let's, let's use business terms. It's in, and that's why we use the harmonious business mm. architecture. If your company is in harmony, it's harmonious. It sounds good. It feels good. Everything's working. If there's dissonance, and that's what mm -hmm. you're describing, dissonance in the way you feel and the way you want to feel, the way you show up in the world versus the way you think you should show up in the world. When there's dissonance, there's disease, there's anger, like you said, there's sleeplessness, all these different things. So it's the same with your body and with your business. And it's so important to perform that root cause analysis to use a stupid consultant term because I'm a stupid consultant, but that's <laughs> what you have to do. So so getting realizing, A, there's a symptom. I love that. And recognizing yeah. the way you're showing up and then saying, okay, it's not anger. Anger is not the problem. Like what's the, what's the real root cause here? What is driving this anger? Right. Right. So I, I love that you went through that process. Now on the backside of that, obviously that was years ago. Tell me how you help people through this process now. So let's say I come to you, I want to work with you. What, what is step one? What are we, what are we going to do? So I am also, I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, I'm a, 
neuro-linguistic programming coach. Mm -hmm. So I have a certification in that, which is basically how do we rewire your brain? How do we take this default operating system that you've gotten throughout mm -hmm. your life? You know, and God bless our parents, God bless society, but we've been given messages and in our convoluted thinking throughout our life, especially in childhood, we've picked up on messages and we've told ourselves stories that might not be true or be serving us, but it's just what we interpreted at the time. And these stories and these pathways that we've created in our brain through our own storytelling can be the limiting beliefs and can be the limitations that are showing up that are stopping us mm -hmm. from doing the thing that we want to do, from feeling worthy, from feeling lovable for being confident. You know what I'm saying? So these are the things that I help tackle in my work with, with my clients and with people who come to me. Um, because I think that's really where it starts. Like we can create plans and we can do, you know, mantras and all of that. But I think that that's very topical. If you want real sustainable change then you have to fix the actual root problem and the genesis of where this all started, where did we learn that we weren't good enough? Where, where did that programming take place of like, I need to play small. I can't go after what I want. Where did that come from? Because if you have all of these limit, limiting beliefs and things that are showing up for you, it doesn't matter what kind of plan you have, you're still going to repeat the same patterns until you get privy to one, the patterns, and two, where they came from. Because you can't heal and you can't fix what you don't understand. So that's always kind of, and that's, I don't know if that's necessarily step one, <laughs> but that is the overarching thing and like what you get when you work with me. Well, I think, I think it kind of has to be right in order to make any change. Yeah. And we have a whole discipline of business change management, which we call modify in order to make a change. You have to realize there's a problem yes. and you may not be the one that sees it. It could be in business. It could be your employees. It could be a customer, whatever notification system you have to identify change. Right. You have to realize it's there. And a lot of us as entrepreneurs or just as human beings, we don't realize, I'm sure you didn't really realize what was going on with your sleepless nights, your anger, yeah. all this other stuff. So yeah, you got to work on, on your mind first because that's where the foundation of change is built. Absolutely. So I, think, I think yeah, that is always the first step to any change, effective lasting change, like you said. So that's super important. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, I think the first thing though, is like really knowing what you want. Cause if you mm -hmm. don't have like a goal or something that you were like trying to envision and see, then you're sort of just out in uncharted waters flailing around, like hoping and wishing like, I don't know, should I go this way? Should I go this way? You know what I mean? But if you're like, no, that's the direction that I'm going. This is the thing that I want. I I think like that's that's always going to be your compass. That's always going to be your North Star. This is how I want to feel. I mean, that's how I use it, right? This is how I want to feel. And anything that like starts my spidey senses start going off and I'm like, mm, this doesn't feel right. I don't want this, right? This is like, if I, this is how much I need to hit for my, or this is what I want my sales goal to be for the month. So now I'm aligned to making sure that that happens throughout the month. Right. So I think it's always knowing what you want. One, cause you, I mean, you wouldn't even work with a coach. You wouldn't even get help if you didn't recognize like I need, this is the thing that I want and I'm not getting there. So I know that I need help. Right. So I think that's always number one. And I, you know, that's, I think that's always the most badass step is being like, Oh, that's what I want. Open up my toolbox. <laughs> nothing in there. I don't have the right tools to get me where I want to go. And that's where I think seeking out help and working with a coach or whomever is going to be really pivotal in, in moving the needle forward and wherever you want to go. So that would be step one. And then I think step two is what stops you? Because that's sometimes part of the conversation that we don't want to have. What stops you? Like, you know what you want to do, but if we don't, and then you're like, this is what I want. How do I make a plan? We Do you watch South Park? No. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm going to use a little South Park reference. I know we we're going to be quick. So there was a South Park episode when Cartman gets visited in the middle of the night by the underwear gnomes. No. Okay. Not, okay. So these like gnomes. <laughs> I'm, so gonna build, but I'm excited to hear how this applies. Okay. So like, so the gnomes come to Cartman's room and they like open up his drawers and they like take all his underwear. And so one night Cartman waits, like wakes, waits up, sees the underwear gnomes taking his underwear and follows them back to the village. And he like, goes in this underground village, which kind of looks like Fraggle Rock. I don't know, for my all my 80s kids. And he's like, they have this big sign on the wall. It's like, step one, collect underwear. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. And I think that's sometimes like what we do is we're like, this is what I want. Got to have a plan. 
But what happens in the in-between is what stops us, where are these limitations, how are, how are we feeling? It's a lot of these like deep uncovering consciousness that cannot be avoided in business. It cannot be avoided in life because if you don't do this work and heal what you need to heal and fix what you need to fix, this shit is going to start showing up in other ways. It's going to be why you don't hit your sales goal. It's going to be why your business isn't successful. It's going to be why your relationships outside of your business aren't sustainable, right? So that in between that question mark phase, I think is like the second part of what holds us back. Where are the limiting beliefs? How do I overcome these limiting beliefs so that they don't start running amok in other parts of my world and in my life and in my business? Yeah, that's that's so key too, because, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in the what if architecture, you nailed it. It was the first step we start with is navigate, navigation. If you don't know where you're going, how do you get there? You what, cannot what are we get doing? anywhere <laughs> without yeah. a plan in business, in life. And you're right, what holds you back comes next because if you don't know where you're going, you don't know what to say yes and no to. So every opportunity is a yes and the next biggest shiny opp opportunity. And everything looks like that sparkle unicorn. Mm. It's not. Mm -hmm. Some things are a pile of steaming shit and you need yes. to know what to say no to. So I, I love that. And I think, um, you know, just from, from going through and doing similar work with businesses, that is you hit the nail on the head with, with the first two steps and then yeah. yeah profit from stealing underwear. That's the obvious outcome. <laughs> Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Profit. That's yep. amazing. And I can't remember. I can't remember in the episode. I think it was arbitrary. I don't even know if they defined what the second step was. But I think what I took from that was just how we're running, you know, how to run business or like what we're missing, that missing part in our life. And that's the thing that we actually need to focus on is the in-between. Because yeah, a lot of people so come to you, I'm sure, the same way they come to me. They're like, this is what I want to do. Help me get there. Uh huh. And it's never the problem <sighs> is never what the real problem is. No, because no, they don't know the where. right. Because I can give you a plan, right? Mm -hmm. I can give you a roadmap to that. But if you're not, if we're not clear with like what the triggers are, we'll hold you back, like where you feel your limitations are and how, and rather than use those limitations as like stopping points, like how do we overcome them? Because everyone's limitations and mindsets are going to be different. So you're going to need something a little bit more personalized to be able to get you to where you want to go. That's like, so you can take action. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of these but before you even take action, before you even make your first million, there's so many other behind the scenes shit that needs to happen of just like clarity and writing and visualizing and healing and con like conversations that need to happen before there's actually any action that gets done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, amazing advice. Now, I want to put your website on the screen. I know you have a, a, a little mm -hmm. freebie for us. Um, yes. So tell me a little bit about what that is and then who should reach out to you and how they can find you. Yeah. So the free guide is a millennial's guide to taking action, which sort of it, it expands on what I just talked about. And there's a couple of other steps in there, too, on what you need to do to get yourself to be able to take action. Like what's the behind the scenes back end of taking action? And when you are able to take action from an honest place, from like your soul without hesitation and and ha are so courageous in it, that's really where you start to live this badass life. So please get that free guide. Um, super easy. Just fill out the form, comes right to your email. And if you are listening to this and what I'm saying is sort of striking a nail on the head where you learned maybe throughout your life that you weren't good enough that you learned to placate and people please. And people pleasing isn't always like, I'll do it for you. I got it. It's not just making other people happy because I love to make people happy. It's the why behind that. And it becomes transactional. Like I'm doing this so that I can feel better. And if you're waiting for external validation and if you're waiting for like an if then, it's that arrival fallacy. Like when I do that, it'll be better. That is a can be really toxic and as an entrepreneur, if you don't clean that shit up, that's going to start infiltrating your business and it's where you're going to take the steaming pile of shit opportunities and not take the aligned opportunities. So where I work with people is really diving into some of that unconscious stuff that's there that really sets up that, well, I have to, and I need to, and what if they hate me and I want people to like me and like, but I'm not good enough. And if I don't do this, then what do people think? 
that kind of stuff. We help to wrap that up so that you can really step forward into your life and into your business with confidence, with like brazenness and with TM badassery. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. That's how to be a badass, how to achieve badassery. Um, this has been too much fun. If you didn't like this episode, you won't like either of us. So don't, don't, yeah, don't. Free guide. don't do anything <laughs> we've said and stay miserable. Okay. Stay miserable. If that's what you stay want. Miserable. Stay miserable. <laughs> and don't be a badass. So, uh, listen, Angela, thank you so much for, for joining thank today. You. So let's tie this to the harmonious architecture real quick. We already talked about navigation. I think that's super important. And like we both said in our own different way, that's where you start. You always start with the navigation discipline. If you don't know where you're going and why you exist, you cannot get to where you want to go. The next thing I heard very prevalent in this conversation was the, the disciplines of inspire and home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. If you're not an optimized human being, how are you going to show up to perform at work in life, in your relationships, in anything that you do. And then also inspire. If you're a leader, you're an entrepreneur, you can't lead unless you yourself are optimized and fit to lead. You can't inspire a team to take action behind the mission of the company and chase that vision if you don't even want to get out of bed and go to work. So please take the time, go download the guide, optimize yourself, get yourself to that next level. And I think for me, the next step after this episode is me and Angela are going to go start a business. We're going to go steal some underwear and make a profit. <laughs> That's what I took from this. So, <laughs> Mic drop. That's Watch that episode. We are, <laughs> we are signing off from another too much fun episode of Harmonious at Lunch. This has been awesome. Go follow Angela and get that free guide. See ya. Thank you, everybody.